Okay, so last class we um, were um, looking at this classic experiment about um, dorsal axis, uh, dorsal ventral axis formation, where they transplanted the dorsal lip of a blastopore from a donor uh, embryo into another embryo. So now it has two uh, organizers and in the result of the experiment you can see that the um, presence of the organizer induced a second dorsal ventral axis with a notochord and neural tube as well as the original um, axis that would have been present in the um, primary embryo. Another um, example of this is in the um, development of the limb bud in uh, chicks. So the limb bud grows out at this apical ectodermal ridge and at the posterior base um, of that limb bud you have a region of cells that are secreting um, a gradient of developmental um, uh, signaling molecules called the zone of polarizing activity. So in the limb, the um, longer digits, digits uh, 4 and 3, um, grow out next to the zone of polarizing activity and the shorter digit, digit 2, grows out at the opposite end where you would have the lowest concentration of these uh, morphogenic uh, proteins. So if you do a, an experiment similar to what they did with the organizer in frogs and you transplant a zone of polarizing activity <coughs> at the anterior oops, at the anterior side of the limb bud so that now you have two um, zones of polarizing activity. You can see that in the resulting um, wing you get the long digits 4 and 3 that developed near the uh, transplanted zone of polarizing activity and digits 4 and 3 um, where it was closest to the um, original zone of polarizing activity and then in between those two regions you get a duplicated um, digit 2. So just like in the organizer experiment you can see that you've effectively twinned the um, the terminal digits in the uh, the limb. So these sorts of developmental characters um, are highly conserved among animals and there's actually a uh, discipline within biology, evolutionary developmental biology or shorthanded evo-devo, which is the study of the evolution of developmental um, processes. So this makes use of both following development and looking at genetic and genomic um, information to determine how it is that animals can have such striking differences in their um, in their form. So this is often controlled by changes in when these genes are expressed and where they are expressed. So uh, many um, genes that have been identified in Drosophila that are homeotic genes. So homeotic just means that you can um, have a structure develop in an incorrect space. So this is very similar to the flower mutants that we looked at in the last unit, where if you mutate the A, B, or C class genes, you get the uh, wrong organs developing within a, a given whorl. And um, in Drosophila, these genes bind to a specific sequence called a homeobox, and these uh, sequences are um, conserved throughout vertebrates and invertebrates and even into um, 
plants and uh, fungi. So in animals, these homeotic genes are called Hox genes. So the Hox genes are found in um, the genome in these uh, tandem arrays and tend to be expressed in a pattern where the uh, most anterior Hox genes are expressed in the most anterior part of the uh, embryo and the most posterior are expressed in the posterior portions of the animal. And among animals, um, one thing that has been observed in the uh, evolution of um, body plans is that these um, blocks of genes have been duplicated. So you can see in the relatively simple fruit fly, you've got one set of genes, but in vertebrates, such as mice and humans, these genes have been duplicated several times, and with the addition of more and more Hox genes, you can make more and more uh, complex structures. Okay, and like I said, uh, homeobox sequences have been found in fungi and plants in addition to uh, animals, and it's these um, duplications of the genes has allowed diversification in um, the when and where the Hox genes can be um, uh, can be expressed. So if we look at this example of a brine shrimp compared to a grasshopper, you can see that there's been a spatial uh, an evolution in the spatial expression of these four um, Hox genes. In the case of the brine shrimp, the three of the Hox genes are co-expressed in the thorax, and each of those segments then um, develop a, a leg, an appendage, and then in the um, case of the brine shrimp, this fourth homeobox is specifically expressed in the genital segments. But now if we look at how the expression has been uh, changed during the evolution um, of arthropods, you can see that the genes are now um, expressed, not rather than being co-expressed, they're expressed individually in the different segments of the thorax. So the first one is um, expressed uh, in the anterior portions of the thorax where you have the two walking legs and then in the uh, uh, terminal segment of the thorax where you're expressing this yellow gene you get the jumping legs and then the third gene is expressed in the abdomen and then finally here just at the very very tip the terminal segment is where you're expressing this uh, fourth gene so it's these changes in the pattern and timing of Hox genes that results in the complex body plans and more and more complex body plans have evolved due to the duplication of these Hox genes because when you duplicate the gene it can then um, be selected differently while still retaining the original function of the, the first copy of the gene. So uh, that's all the information we need to know about uh, Hox genes, and so that's it. Bye-bye.